Hey what's up guys, Aaron here and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode, episode number 32 today for the Italian Grand Prix in Season 2. If you guys did miss the previous episode, then be sure to go check that one before you see this one at the Dutch Grand Prix. That was a very chaotic race and in the end, well, we actually turned up to be a very good one for ourselves. I mean, kind of us and Aston Martin were very closely matched in the end, but that wasn't the case initially at the very start of the race weekend. Obviously, tyre wear was a massive factor around there. Don't think it will be here in Italy, to be honest, but like last season, um, you know, the Dutch Grand Prix ended early for us in Season 1, and the Italian Grand Prix ended early for us in Season 1, because we had that floor damage, or suspected floor damage, or whatever it was. Um, so I'm hoping, once again, we can actually see the back end and the end of this Grand Prix, unlike in the previous season. But before we get into that, we have some priorities to take care of. We need to re-sign Sergio Perez to keep him on for the remainder of the season. The contract period's here. We've gone for the low risk negotiation strategy because, you know, spoiler alert, coming off the back of another win this season, Sergio Perez, I don't want to risk losing him this season. He's been doing great. I'm sure he wants to stay at the team, to be fair, because we're giving him a car that so far is allowing him to fight for a Drivers' World Championship with Sebastian Vettel and in the Constructors. We are just about, you know, managing to stay ahead of Aston Martin, even though maybe I'm not pulling my total, total weight but we're doing better than Stroll, which is, you know, what we have to do. Because as long as Perez beats Vettel, I beat Stroll in the in the championship, we can get the Constructors uh, at the second time of asking at all in this career mode series, which is still bonkers to think about. But that's how crazy Perez has been as a teammate. He's kind of... Re I feel like he's dragged us up the order in terms of not only even just him do getting results, I feel like him doing so well has motivated us and has made sure we've kept on the upgrades as much as we have to be honest. Um, and it, it, you know, on that note, we're going to continue to look at what we can upgrade on the car to make sure we stay with our rivals and the cars around us. Aston Martin, but even Ferrari and McLaren have closed up the gap in the R&D chart, of course, in the last couple of races. So we need to make sure we're continuing to make upgrades where we can. I had a look at the aero, but the aero, we're kind of now bottlenecked by not having spec three. So I think now that we finally, you know, got Perez re-signed. That's why I haven't been spending money on the HQ, uh, because we had to have enough money to re-sign him. Now that we've re-signed him, now we can look ahead to upgrading the HQ facilities again, and I think the next one I'm going to do is getting Aero to spec 3. Even though there are other HQ upgrades that we could do uh, elsewhere, I think getting that department to spec 3 is the next step in terms of uh, not being too, you know, bottlenecked by where we are. In terms of the chassis and engine, there's still plenty of upgrades to do, and I don't feel like we are at a stage where where we're being hampered by our spec level. You may have seen there, we upgraded the chassis with a major weight re redistribution. Um, so hopefully that will help the weight balance, you know, and that, that should, in theory, actually help mid-corner and stuff like that, the issues we're having around Zandvoort. But um, yeah, it's going to actually be a little bit of a while before we can maybe have, even afford, though, that upgrade, you know. It's 12 million on the build time, which is the one upgrade that will get us to spec three, because the other uh, other departments in the aero facility, they're, they're still on spec level one, actually really. So, well and truly, even though it may have seemed like so far this season, we've actually had a pretty decent, you know, level of R&D and upgrading, even though we've been on reduced R&D and the AI have been on increased R&D in cash. Now, at this stage, that 12 million, you know, we have to wait for 6 million worth of income coming in. That's going to be a bit of a wait and that's when maybe our AI rivals can make up some time on it. So, we need to be careful. And I think you can see on the R&D shop with the rate that Ferrari and McLaren have been uh, upgrading as of late, and also Red Bull here, they actually make a big, big step forward. It, it looks like now, finally, you've got those kind of, that three-pack of McLaren, Ferrari, McLaren, and Red Bull. They are actually finally seeing the benefits of that increased R&D and money in the career mode settings, and they're now actually starting to gain a lot on us, and quite rapidly. So, I actually wouldn't be surprised if they overtake us in the R&D chart by the end of the season. Of course, I'll try my best not to let that happen, and we're going to continue to try and upgrade as much as we can, but I'm starting to see a pattern that we're slowing down on upgrades and they're just plowing on basically at the same rate they've always been. But we now turn our attentions then to the race weekend at hand Monza, the Italian Grand Prix it is very very sunny here on the Saturday but there is some rain maybe forecast for the Sunday so we're going to have to watch out for that but in quali Q1 uh, well uh, a bit of traffic to deal with actually with Bottas kind of holding me up a little bit uh, just after Ascari there having to take a little bit of a wider line 
fine to get through and then into Parabolica chucking the car in fifth gear down to fourth momentarily to get the nose turned in. I'm finding as of late the nose isn't as responsive as I want it to be. Whether that's something on this setup, you know, obviously Italy I'm running very low wings compared to what I usually run, you know, near the, nearer to the default basically, but we're running I think 3-3 three, three or 4-3 four, three on the wing level, so you know, obviously trying to get as low as we can without being too uncomfortable for myself on the higher fuel loads in the 50% race, but um, uh, it looks like we actually have some good pace here. Myself and Lando one in two there. We're only, you know, what's that, you know, less than a thousand, you know, it's a tiny, tiny amount uh, just behind Lando there, so we could have been quickest of all, and it looks like we maybe uh, actually finally got a bit of a measure on Sergio Perez finally at one circuit. To be fair, at Belgium, I was actually faster than Perez in quali, but obviously I uh, fluffed up uh, you know, that, that, that damage we had in Q3. So I think at Belgium, we would have honestly been ahead of Perez on merit in qualifying. We obviously got ahead of him anyway in the race, but I think we could have been there on pure pace. And it looks like we're showing that pedigree. Although, to be fair, Q2, Perez comes back at us a little bit. We're very closely matched, though, here in the second session. Vettel now shows his hand. Norris looking a little bit slower there, but I think that's just discrepancy between sessions, traffic and whatever. But the big hitter is Lewis Hamilton and Lance Stroll, both knocked out in the Mercedes and Aston Martin, the you know, two cars that are, you know, the two best teams on the grid just about ahead of us in the R&D chart, two of them knocked out. That's a big deal, and it means the likes of, uh, well, Russell are in Q3 in the Alpine. But we're here then into the top 10 shootout. You saw there maybe going a little bit too deep into turn one there, making a little bit of an error, going a little bit late on the brakes, uh, trying to be eager and gain some time. I actually lost time in the end, so I already know we're going to gain uh, at least, maybe I'd say, two tenths off the first sector alone on a second run. But on this first run, let's see what we can do. It's P2. Perez ahead of us. And there's actually no delta time for how uh, far behind we are. So I think we are very, very close. But here we go then. The second run in the top 10 shootout. At the moment, we're down to P5. Perez is P4. Vettel P3. I don't know who's 2 and 1. I suspect, I think, one of the McLarens is. At least one of them. Leclerc now has gone quicker than us. He's P3 then. So doing well for Ferrari. Perez has improved his time, it would seem. Maybe, because he's not there on the top left anymore. Let's see. We've gone purple in the first sector. Green in the second there. And we are about nearly two and a half tenths up. So let's see what this can be. P6 right now across the line. What is it going to be? I think that was a very good lap. P2 in the dash. Yes, P2. Not quite pole position. We were close, you know. We were close. Just under two tenths. But Lando Norris is the one that gets pole position. McLaren looking good in the hands of him at least. Ricardo, surprisingly, uh, is uh, eight, uh, eight tenths off Lando, which is not surprising in real life, but in the game, you know, you guys have been watching on. Ricardo's the one with three wins and Lando with none so far this season, but the man with three wins in season one in the McLaren is on pole position, so let's see if he can convert it to a win. We'll try and stop him though. We're on the front row and we've out-qualified Perez, but both of us, first and second row, looking like we've got a quick package underneath us. Ferrari though, good for them at the home GP to be stuck in their P3 and 5, and it's big news for Vettel. We're down in P6, the Aston Martin team, maybe not looking that great around here, which is great news for Perez. Remember, Perez and Vettel level on points going into this race, so this will be big for him, but for us, I'm concentrating on our race. I was gutted not to get the win at Belgium. We've surely got to go, go for it here, for here from the front row. Let's go to the race. We're back in Italy once again for another round of the Formula One World Championship. And what a great race is in store for us today here at the oldest circuit on the calendar. Monza hosted its first race all the way back in 1922. With top speeds reaching 215 miles per hour, only a few places can challenge Monza's crown as the fastest circuit in F1. Hard braking zones going into the three chicanes make up the majority of the 11 corners on this 3.6 mile circuit. And just in case the slipstream wasn't enough, two DRS zones will help encourage some closer action. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let me ask you about Aston Martin. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lando Norris will lead us away from pole position and the owner driver alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Perez, Charles Leclerc and Vettel, Bottas, Ricardo, Russell and Max Verstappen. 
Hamilton, Stroll, Pierre Gasly, and Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Ocon, Nicholas Latifi, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Mick Schumacher, Joe, Mazepin, and Callum Eilert. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Well, the skies are very, very sunny here at the start of this Grand Prix, but you can see it might even get to heavy rain by the end of this race, maybe. So there's going to be a big switch up in the weather. That's a massive 0 to 100 over the course of this Grand Prix this afternoon. Strategy-wise, it's going to be a one-stop by the way, soft to medium or soft to hard, but, you know, we may as well go soft to medium if we are going to then go on to intermediates. You know, you may as well go with the quickest tyre. Uh, whether we even get to that, me you know, that first pit stop on dries, I don't know, actually, because it depends on, obviously... The the weather's not completely accurate. The rain could come earlier or later. Either way, we're going to go for the medium and then we'll just play it by ear if the rain does start to fall. But from the front row, you know, that runner to turn one, surely we've got to be looking to try and take the lead from Lando Norris uh, or over the course of the, of the first stint. I think we've got the pace. Our car's always been really good in a straight line, in the slipstream especially with DRS and ERS deploying uh, even more so. So I'm actually quite confident. But the McLaren has also been quite a quick car in straight line. And don't count out for Ferrari, they're at the home Grand Prix, Leclerc, you know, he was actually hanging on the back of Perez uh, last episode before the tyre wear kicked in, so I think they're looking quicker uh, than they have done in previous races, so watch out for them as well, but we are raring to go to the Temple of Speed, the fastest track in Formula 1, and we're on the front row as we go to five red lights to the Italian Grand Prix, and we are underway, and it's a slow start for the pole man, Lando Norris, we've got an electric start, we're up into P1 by a Whisper, but Perez, look at him go! It's another cracking start from Checo, like he did in Hungary. We lock up, we go deep into turn one on purpose to give Perez the room, and that's allowed him to get up into second place. It's a one-two for of Archer Racing, and for the team, it's a great, great start. Norris down to P3, Sainz up to P4, as Leclerc is floundering a little bit in P5, but on lap one, look at the poor exit we've got, and Perez comes at us at a rate of not to the left-hand side. We go defensively into Parabolica, but Perez will hold the outside line. Oh, very, very close. And Perez actually gets squeezed out of it. And Norris is on the inside. The McLaren, it's a drag race between him and Sergio Perez as we lead the Italian Grand Prix onto lap number two. But Norris is looking at us in the slipstream. Obviously, on the F1 game, the slipstream is so, so powerful. So a track like Monza, just like Belgium, it is a slipstream fest. So we're going to see some, you know, swapping, interchangeable. And kind of, I've said this before, on F1 2020, you almost don't want to fight people at Monza because you lose too much time to the cars behind you. We've uh, just about defended against Lando Norris there and maintained P1, and we've got about half a second on him. But even though we're setting two purple sectors, a purple lap, Norris is going even quicker, and he sets a purple there. So it's myself v Lando here at Monza. It looks like as Perez is falling back a little bit. We go defensive to the inside again. Norris on the inside. We're doing all we can to make sure we give him the space, but equally also making sure we cover ourselves off and we're doing just that some textbook defending so far on lap number four but Lando comes back at us once again this time on the outside of Parabolica this will be very impressive if he holds it through we're going to maintain the racing line but that actually maybe helps Norris because he gets in the toe in the slipstream right underneath our rear wing and this is the closest he's been to our rear wing onto the main straight he's now fully alongside us he's fast us he's flown by with DRS and he's up into P1 we're a sitting duck there we couldn't do anything really. I was deploying ERS all the way down that straight, but despite that, the McLaren with DRS is quicker. No surprise, but we're going to try and stick with Lando if we can on lap number six. DRS open for us as we go towards Ascari. My team is asking me for a pit stop change. I'm going to say no to that or just try and get that off my screen because we make a beautiful little move as he drifts through into the left-hander there. We locked up on the front left and the rear end stepped out. Lovely little overtake there, but to be honest, actually thinking about it, I actually maybe should have just stayed behind him on purpose because he's now going to get a great toe once again off the back of Parabolica. Again, he's very close to our rear wing and this time he may be uh, you know, bringing Perez and Sainz and Leclerc along with him because the top five, the top six even, is covered by only a couple of mere seconds as Lando once again powers past with DRS. This time though, he leaves some space open. He goes too tight on the line and we're back down the inside. We bang 
Ty is on the right hand side. We just can't get the power down though. And he maintains P1. I thought we could have re-overtaken him there quite cheekily because he just left the door open. But no, we will however have a second bite at the cherry because through the Curva Grande, really good run. Fate to the left, go to the right and sell him the dummy. Round the outside, it's a fantastic little move to get back up into P1 once again. But it is Monza, Slipstream Fest. You can guess what's about to happen. He's going to come back at us. This time though, it's into Parabolica and he's fully around the outside and he may just do this. He's going to keep it around the outside. We go tighter on the line to try and defend, but he's got the overspeed. We tighten up a bit too much maybe and Perez is also in there. We boxed him in a little bit, being a bit cheeky with our teammate and Leclerc. No, Sainz has come out of nowhere and it's now a four-way fight. It's 3-1 into turn one in Sainz and Norris have made contact. The two former teammates. Uh, Sainz, I think with simulation damage, I can probably uh, confidently say Sainz has definitely got damage there because he's sparked on the front left. And so now we're down to P4 in a flash. Perez B2. Norris leads the way. Yellow flags as the car is stricken so no one can overtake just quite yet. But we're going to try and line up a pass on Carlos Sainz if we can a little bit later on. We've got DRS obviously coming up. Leclerc though is pushing us through this right-hander. This is where the AI are very quick. Just like Zanvoort, mid-corner, mid-apex. These guys are so quick in this section. But here we are then with DRS and deploying uh, all the ERS in the world that we dare on this straight to make the move on Sainz on the inside. It's going to be a tight move. Sainz doesn't want to give up the position, but he has to. He's got damage, I'm pretty sure, because look how much time Perez and Norris have uh, taken over. And now as we move on to lap number nine, Perez goes for the lead of the Italian Grand Prix on the outside. Norris defending as much as he can, but looks like Perez may have it. But let's see who can out traction who. Looks like it's Norris, that McLaren. He it's got some real great traction, but Perez and our car has the straight line speed maybe, so they're still going at it. Will Perez maintain it down the inside? Yes, he does. This is a great squabble for P1, and let's join the party. Switching left to right, good little jump through, and we're down the inside, and we're going to squeeze Perez fully out. He's on the rumble strip, and so much so that Leclerc now is down the inside to make it too wide. He's the next right-hander. Bit cheeky from myself, yes, but we held Perez enough last episode. This race, it's my time for the team, okay? I'm the one who wants to beat him, and I want to try and go for the win, but it's going to be three wide, because Vettel sent it down the inside, now he backs out, and Ricardo has smacked into the rear of Sebastian Vettel, and he is out of the Italian Grand Prix. Last race's race winner has hit the back of one of our championship rivals, Sebastian Vettel. And Ricardo is out. The full core safety car is out. That's all off the back of pretty much the move I made on Perez. Because uh, Perez and Leclerc going side by side. Vettel tries to make it three wide. Then things better of it. And Ricardo, uh, well, it's a bit silly from Ricardo, really. Because he doesn't, he needs to look ahead of him a bit more. But this is on board with Vettel. He tries to make it three wide. Backs out of it. Correct thing to do. But then Ricardo comes storming in. And he just doesn't clock that Vettel slowing down that much at the apex. He's got, he's got pinched out. And uh, he's out of the Grand Prix. So even though Ricardo got a win, his bad luck continues in terms of... He's had, uh, I think, four DNFs so far this season, Ricardo. He's still there in the top four in the championship. So it speaks volumes about when he does go quick. He does go very, very quick with the three wins so far. But, um, yeah, I mean, that is just how it is. Unlucky in for us, though. Oh, my God. What a pit stop. 1.9. We've got ahead of Norris. What a pit stop from our pit crew. Hey, we've jumped. We've jumped the McLaren. We're into P1. We're into P1. Absolutely amazing stuff. There's still plenty of work to do because we've got a lot of this Grand Prix to go and, and the rain to come, remember, as well. But we're into P1 once again. Great work by our team, Chris. There's still debris on track then. Oh, 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 my God. We've hit the safety car. We just got a warning for collision, but I'm actually really surprised we didn't get a penalty there. Oh my god, okay, you, I actually do, I want to convey how lucky we just got there, because usually, when you hit the safety car ever, you get a penalty, and also usually the safety car is like a bloody bomb uh, uh, driving on track, usually you break anything of your car, but we've got no damage, I asked my team twice about the vehicle condition, just in case, no damage on the on the, on the front wing, thankfully, and no penalty, so we, uh, we've actually got off so lucky there. 
by hitting the safety car, not getting anything. And we can continue and uh, get going on this restart then. I also need to point out, we're on the medium tyre. Everyone else has chosen the hard for some reason, but I'm still banking on the rain coming. So hopefully we have a bit of an advantage in this second set in terms of uh, the soft, the rubber. But we're trying to warm up our front tyres because they, they were desperately cold. And I'm trying to be a bit too clever here on the restart, trying to hold everyone up and go as late as we can and get the jump on Norris. But on the exit, and as I go, you can see on the uh, bottom, right I actually accidentally opened up the uh, heads up display instead of hitting ERS so we didn't hit ERS as early as I wanted to so Norris has a bit of a run on the outside of turn when we go deep on purpose to try and squeeze him out and also because my brakes were a bit cold and the tyres as well a bit of contact made with Lando unfortunately and he goes down to P4 my bad but I think he locked up as well to be fair to myself and him Leclerc up into P2 Verstappen flying high in P3 but we now watch on Sebastian Vettel the championship uh, well, one of the championship leaders, obviously level on points going to this race uh, at the moment, chasing after Giovinazzi, making moves on Giovinazzi potentially. Perez has just overtaken George Russell. So it looks like Perez and Vettel lost some places in the safety car period. But Vettel with the double dive bomb. No way. No way. Oh my God. Vettel with the double move. And that's very important because there's now one car, not two, between himself and Sergio Perez. That is a champion's dive bomb, maybe. Vettel making the moves when he needs to. Up into P7. Perez, though, he overtook Russell, P5. But I think Perez and Vettel both lost uh, places in the safety car period. Of course they did because I think I think a lot of people have to double stack, of course, remember. Back to our fight, though, for P1. And you've seen there, we've just defended very successfully against Leclerc, cut him off at the break point, he was uh, looking for a little move on the outside but we just got across and were able to stop that happening so we're going to continue on in P1, 6 tenths the gap actually to Leclerc behind us, we're actually building a bit of a gap maybe so I'm trying to see if we can break DRS desperately because that will be very important for us and we watch on with Giovinazzi having a massive spin at Parabolica and he's gone into the wall, that is a huge AI mistake and the safety car is out for the second time in this race and that is amazing. Uh, that's the first time I've ever seen a mistake like that. It's a very realistic mistake because we've seen that from, well, Ferrari in 2020, remember. Not quite a 360 spin from Leclerc, but he did spin out a Parabolica in 2020. Let's look at a replay then and let's listen to Giovinazzi's throttle. And oh, just there. He just applied throttle, like full throttle, and it wasn't, you know, he didn't have the grip. And look at the dust he's kicked up there and how dangerous that is. So that's why the safety guy's been called out. But, um, yeah, maybe Tarwa, I don't know exactly. I don't know if Gio was on those hards from the start of the Grand Prix. But uh, he spun out and caused a safety car. So here we are then. Lap 15 on to 16. Overcast conditions. So the rain is on the way. And we are, well, it's already raining. It's actually, it's actually already raining. Look at the halo. Look at the rain droplets as we try this clever restart again. And this time... I'm going to nail it a little bit better. We do hit ERS at the right time. And Leclerc is caught napping. This is what I wanted to do with Norris. But we didn't pull it off quite exactly. So this is much better. We're able to weave about a little bit. And then take a nice easy run to turn one. A little bit deep there. As you can clearly see on the top of the chassis. The rain is falling. So now there's the question mark of when do we pit? Are my... Oh yeah, we're leading the race. Surely my team this time give me the first port of call on to intermediates. Compared to the first call to Paris every single time so far when it's these kind of conditions but we're taking it nice and easy into all these brake zones because I'm just not sure of the grip you, you, you're very, going into an unknown basically when it's starting to rain like this uh, suddenly and you've not been out there and you've been out under a safety car because you don't know what the full speed grip is like and the rear tyres are cooking a little bit on the rear left on the mediums but it's already raining so we should be fine to go to inters our tyres shouldn't wear out too much but we've got a replay of uh, the restart here. We're looking at Sebastian Vettel. I wonder if he's going to dive bomb Perez maybe here as he pulls out. And oh, no! Oh, the dive bomb's gone wrong for him. Vettel, I think he was trying to dive bomb two cars of Russell and Perez at the restart, but instead he's hit the back of George Russell's Alpine. That's a massive mistake for the four time world champion. And that could be very costly for the championship. He goes for the dive here, and oh, he just 
just clips Russell. He could have legitimately actually made a dive on Perez, and that would have been even uh, crazier. But uh, no, Vettel, no front wing now. That's surely him out of the points today. So that's huge for Perez in P4. They're level on points. So that's going to be, you know, a clean number of points ahead of him in the championship then by the end of this one. Back to our race, though, towards Ascari, and Leclerc is closing in, and I think he's still got DRS. Yeah, DRS is still active, so he's on the inside. We squeeze him, and we're just about maintaining position, but look how close he is. He's pretty much pushing us through, and we've lost the rear end. The rear end stepped out. Leclerc nips through on the inside. Verstappen's there now as well on the right. Can we re-overtake Leclerc? Round the outside of Parabolica, maybe. We're going to have to go for it, but Leclerc has looked mighty off that corner of Ascari. You saw the rear end stepping again. Surely it's time for the intermediate. Surely. No. No one's coming in yet. I think it's time. I, I think we could have actually dived in there because my rear end is not feeling well. I think this is maybe the medium tyre tyre wear kicking in a little bit because no one else seems to be having this rear end issue. But clearly you can see how stable that Ferrari was. Like through Ascari. Like, I had no grip there. I actually caught the car. I would have spun into the wall had I not caught it. And now Perez is making a move on the outside lap number 19. But look how wet it is. Surely it is time for intermediates now. I'm going all over the shop. Leclerc's in. We're going to dive in. Perez is going to come in behind us. Unfortunately for him, it's another double stack. And he's going to be the one that feels the pain yet again at Italy. But, you know, the vibe, like I said earlier, when I squeezed him out, you know, I helped him enough at Zandvoort. Today is my day. I want the best chance I, I can get to try and close up to Leclerc. So we come in now for the pit stop. Intermediate tyres. Greenwall going on. A little bit of a delay going out there, out of the pit box. But we're there and we're still going to be behind Leclerc. Verstappen obviously is now the car behind us. Then Norris, Perez, he's going to go down the order of the double stack. Race control, DRS disabled. So the correct time to come in for intermediates. And Leclerc is 2.5 ahead of us. It's very, very skatey out there. With low wings, remember, we've set this car up for the dryer. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge. But let's see what we can do. We've got seven laps. Can I do anything to close back up to Leclerc and try and fight for this win still at Monza? Well, from the gap of 2.5, the gap is now 0.8 on the second last lap of the Grand Prix. I actually settled down in this stint in these uh, last six laps. And I actually had some good pace here. So we've been catching. And we are within one second of Leclerc. Obviously, no DRS to help us. Meanwhile, we've got behind Verstappen third Lando fourth, George Russell P5 and Perez looked like he was trying to go for a move there but couldn't quite do it, then Stroll P7, Gasly 8th, Hamilton 9th, Alonso 10th, Sebastian Metal all the way down in P18 so Perez even though he lost time in the double stack P6, that's all, still all points. He's getting well over Vettel. You know, they came level in on points. Vettel's getting zero. So any points are good points for Perez in terms of the championship fight. But back to our, uh, our fight here. On to the last lap of the Grand Prix. This is so close and so frustrating. We're gaining so much in Sector 1 every time. 0 0.5, 0 0.4. We're there with ERS, but we just need DRS maybe. We just need Leclerc to make a little bit of an error and we need to really be great through this sector. We take a little bit too much curb on my liking that time round though on this last lap. The tyres are actually wearing out quite quickly here on the intermediates and the gap is still 0 0.4. It's been 0 0.4 uh, uh, wavering from 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 for pretty much the last three laps. And here we are, the last straight. I just couldn't do it. I just, I needed DRS. I needed something to get in a straight line because we're quite equalised in the wet. And so in the end, as we skate through Parabolica, Leclerc is going to come through for a fabulous home Grand Prix victory for Ferrari. Fair play, you know, a Ferrari winning at Monza is quite something. And Leclerc wins again at Monza like he did in 2019. But... Ah, oh, if it wasn't for this mistake, this mistake in Ascari where my rear end stepped out mid-left-hander and Leclerc slipped down the inside, if it wasn't for that, I actually feel like we could have just held on for P1 on the intermediates after the pit stop, but it wasn't meant to be. You do get punished for those very mistakes, and Leclerc did not make one, and he's got P1. Fair play. There it is then. Victory in the Italian Grand Prix. An historic race and an achievement they can be immensely proud of. Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Well, keeping their tyre temperatures up in the tricky wet conditions was really important. There's not much grip out there at the best of times, and it's 10 times worse if you're out there on cold tyres. So the way they kept the rubber in its proper operating window was a huge advantage to them. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today, 
and a stunning win for Ferrari. Well, it's a massive win for Ferrari. This is actually their first win of, uh, of season two. So this is very, very big and maybe shows that Ferrari are indeed actually back. They've actually improved so much that they're right there in the R&D chart with us. And we're actually very, very close to Aston Martin who are in the championship fight. And, you know, Mercedes aren't actually that far ahead. And clearly they're actually not that quick. So Ferrari are back. They are back with Leclerc winning this race. Again, bittersweet, second place. Not the win this time again. Still on one win uh, in total in this series so far. And one win this season versus Perez is, I don't even know, three or four wins or whatever. Um, oh, we just can't. We just can't seem to close. We can't close on the win there. That, But like I said, that one mistake we made, that was it. So I know where we made the mistake. And it's just a case of, you know, damp conditions. It's easy to make. And, and I am a very mistake-prone driver, as you guys know, if you've watched me for a while. So uh, it wasn't meant to be today. But uh, it's still very good points, I must say. 18 points. Us will take that. Perez, eight points for him. You know, I did kind of screw him over a few times this race, but I wanted to go for it. This was my race today, not his, in terms of the team. And so uh, he's, still got, he's still got the lead of the championship by eight points, because Vettel, he made that massive howler and uh, scored zero. So Perez now, for the first time, obviously I knew he le led because of the wins, but now he legitimately leads by points for the first time this season. Very, very intriguing. We get back our P3 in the drive championship ahead of Ricardo after his DNF today and we actually build the gap to Aston Martin 37 points now between ourselves and the green team in second and a little note despite Red Bull being such a disaster so far this season to be fair this race with Verstappen there quite positive because they're finally now finally ahead of Alfa Tauri Alfa Tauri are no longer the lead Red Bull team they have been for quite a few races in the standings but uh, they've finally done it with Verstappen actually getting out a good podium to be fair to him but guys that has been a very exciting uh, slightly bittersweet, again, Italian Grand Prix, but kudos to Leclerc and, and Ferrari for the first time this season win, and what a win it is at Monza, at, in front of the Tifosi. To be fair, it doesn't get much better than that for them. That is quite nice to see. If you guys did enjoy it, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you are new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.